Hello, I'm Martin Oates. Well, for the next 20 minutes, I'm joined by uh, Alison Seebeck, Labour MP for Plymouth Moorview, and by the Lib Dem peer, Robin Teverson. Welcome back to both of you. Mm. Now, the so-called bedroom tax sounds as if it should belong, perhaps, in the 18th century, along with the window tax. And David Cameron rightly pointed out it's not a tax at all. It is, though, a cut in housing benefit, which many fear will cause serious problems for people in the South West in just a few months' time. Townsend Melville reports. It's been the family home for 17 years, but Michelle Kent says a change to housing benefit dubbed the bedroom tax is leaving her and her teenage daughter with a stark choice, move out or lose vital cash. This isn't about bricks and mortar. These are, it's, it's my home. It's my home and I've been in it for 17 years, you know. From April, working age people in social housing deemed to have spare rooms will get less housing benefit. Disabilities mean Michelle can't work, but her Penryn home has three bedrooms and only one of her three children still lives at home. So she'll be down about £12 a week. I just feel that making somebody find some money from the bare minimum of what they've got in the first place, I don't think that's fair on anybody. Michelle is one of 9,000 people across Devon and Cornwall, 660,000 nationally, that according to government figures will be affected by this change. A change it's claimed will bring fairness back into the system. But for two weeks in a row, this has been under scrutiny at Prime Minister's questions, with Plymouth's Alison Seebeck raising the case of a constituent whose son in the armed forces might not have a bedroom when he comes home. There are many people in private rented accommodation who don't have housing benefit, who cannot afford extra bedrooms, and we have to get control of housing benefit. We are now spending as a country £23 billion on housing benefit, and we have to get that budget under control. Critics argue that although the government might be right to tackle the housing benefit bill, this policy isn't the right way to do it, as there's simply not the social housing available for people to downsize to. Mr Speaker, how can it possibly make sense to force people into a situation where they cost the state more, not less, by moving to the private rented sector? The councillor in charge of housing in Cornwall echoes these concerns. I think the bedroom tax is going to hit the people who really need housing. Uh, it's going to hit the people on, on, on low incomes. And I don't think it's going to deliver what the government wants it to deliver, and that's for people to downsize. We haven't got the houses for people to downsize into. Michelle showed me her spare room. This is my third room. You can see how big it is or how little it is. Her MP suggested she could take in a lodger to cover her extra costs. Michelle thinks that's ridiculous. Sarah Newton acknowledges every case will be different and says government cash will help the most vulnerable meet their rent payments. Cornwall Council this financial year will be getting just under £900,000 so that where there are people who can't move, uh, particularly people with disabilities who need a spare room, foster parents, they actually can have help if they can't afford to make it up. The government says the changes aren't about forcing people to move and that it's expected most people will find a way to make up the shortfall. With other welfare reforms about to affect her too, Michelle says sometimes it's not that simple. And I think the difference with this is it doesn't affect everybody. So those that it doesn't affect can't see what's going on. They can't see what it's doing to people like me. Robin, you're a Cornwall councillor. Mm. Do you agree with your fellow Cornwall councillor in that package that there's going to be a big problem in actually finding these smaller properties for people who downsize too? Well, Mark Kazmarek has uh, a fair bit of uh, knowledge about that. I, I'm not sure it is quite as simple as that because there's a private central sector rental market as well. The real problem about it is that we do have uh, a small stock of uh, social housing to a degree. The Labour Party, last government, the housing stock on social housing went down by almost half a million units. And uh, so there is a shortage We've got to live there. with that at the moment, though. Yeah, we, we have. And that's exactly the reason why we need to make sure we try to use the current stock more effectively. Now, no one would want to do this if we had lots of social housing, but we don't. That's not been built. It... So what we have to do is try to make sure we get some mobility within that market, like it is in the private sector, even if you've got housing benefit, and you actually try to get 
families that fit into the housing that's available. The real problem is the five million people nationwide that have their own waiting lists that aren't even in houses at the minute. But we have to help the ones that are there at the moment. You talk about people moving into the private sector. Ed Miliband saying that this would be a very bad thing, a very expensive thing to happen. Well, he, he may be completely um, prejudiced against the private sector. I don't, well, I don't no, know. It may be more expensive, is, which obviously would, be, would defeat the object, he's saying, of saving money. Mm. No, 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 no. You've, what we're trying to do here, the, the object is, and it's a difficult process because the amount of investment in housing stock by the last two governments has been absolutely uh, minimal, is that we have to try to get the stock that we've got working better, which means the million or so bedrooms that are out there, we give better value for, for taxpayers and for people to be able to live in houses that are the right okay, size. Okay, so well, Rob is obviously saying that this is part of Labour's inheritance, no, which is a problem. Absolutely. Um, yes, but also, he seems to be saying, unlike Ed Miliband, that if people move into the private sector, this is a good thing. It's part of the solution, not part of the problem. It isn't part of the sh solution. We actually do need more homes. Um, of you know, we well, yeah, I think everybody's yeah, agreeing on that. We're, we're we're all that. The, the, the point about the private sector is if, if more people are moving into the private sector, I know because I met South West Landlords uh, fairly recently, and I know from my post bag, that there simply aren't the properties in the private rented sector either. So all you do is put pressure on the private rented sector, prices go up because there's a scarcity, housing benefit comes in for others at, at a different level, the housing benefit bill will continue to go up. We're seeing it in London where there's pressure on, on the private rented sector. This is not the solution. It's a real ham-fisted attempt um, by the government. And it's, it's hurting people. And it, as the lady said in the film, this is not just about the bedroom tax. It's about council tax benefit changes that are also going to hit working for the working poor. And, and they are simply saying to me, and I had it on the doorstep, why is Cameron doing this to people like us? And, you know, that is well, really resonating. what about the people that have no house, Alison? I mean, that, you haven't even answered that, have you? Those it's are... all about people that, who, uh, who are lucky enough. They should be um, sure there's all sorts of challenges there. Um, but there's a whole raft of people that don't have any house, can't afford any house, and have no prospect of any house whatsoever. And I think that... And that was it, the last <coughs> government's uh, no, problem, wasn't. to be quite the, frank. No, The social housing budget was cut almost in half by Eric Pickles. So, I'm but, sorry, no, 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 the blame for the lack of building... 400,000 less social housing units in the stock at the end of the Labour government as at the beginning. It's a fact. It was a million more during the Conservatives beforehand, I agree. That, you're but talking there... That, uh, you're, that's you're, 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 that's you're, the fact. You're, you're putting the right to buy issue into, this, into the debate. The point is that more houses were being well, you didn't built... you stop the right to the, buy, did you? The more houses were being built under the last Labour government in the pits of the recession than are currently being built in under this government. Year, in, the in the very last year, perhaps, the rest of the time, no. it was one of the lowest ever. We were up ever. to 210,000 houses a year. And we need 250, and it was on an upward trend, and that was clearly happening. The number of council We are now housed. seeing more homeless and, people, and the, the, fewer planning applications. This government is not building houses. Nationally, there were in, during the okay. Labour period of the Labour government, there were no more than three digits. You never got into the thousands in, in terms of council houses that were built. Just, That's different just quickly to get back to the so-called bedroom tax, should people, though, be in bigger houses than they need? It, it is wasteful, isn't it? No, clearly in, in, we need to look at how people occupy their homes. We have a whole different mindset. The people who are in the homes now, like the lady on the film, when she took her home, it was a home for life. It was her home. I think if you're sort of starting to let from scratch now, you would say to people, this is your home, but we may need to look at how long you can occupy it. If you need all your rooms, we'll move you on. Um, it, it is really difficult to suddenly sort of draw a line in the sand and say, right, okay, sorry, that's not your home anymore. You can't have your son to, to come and stay. You can't have a carer to come and live with you. No, you can't. I had, no, no, you carers can't. are allowed. No. Yes, they are. And disability and, disability oh. and carers, that's, that's allowed. And foster, and foster you, parents uh, as well. With those respect, are, those are with, res for the with respect, if Can't you look at my caseload and the people who are getting advice, and I've had advice from Lord Freud himself about some of these people, including the lady with the son in the armed forces, it is entirely contradictory. People need clarity and they're not yet getting it and some people are genuinely frightened that they are going to lose oh, their home. Okay. Pen right. sorry, can I just make a Very Pensioners frequently. are excluded uh, yeah, from this, uh, people with uh, carers <laughs> and those that are foster parents, right. quite rightly. We must move on.